Welcome to two Stuart Sirius steam engines. This is part one. These engines are different in several ways. One of them came from a World War II electricity generating set called an Alco Firefly, and the other one is a more modern build. The engine on the left is the newer build, and the one on the right is one that at some stage was taken from a World War II generating set. This video is a comparison between two Stuart Sirius steam engines, and as I mentioned in the introduction, they're both very different. I'm going to refinish the green one. It's not really that bad mechanically, but it does need some attention. The red one, on the other hand, is like new. I don't think this has done much running at all. The valve timing is perfect and it does not have any appreciable wear. This series of Stuart engines were actually named after stars, this being Sirius, the largest of the stars. And the other two smaller ones were the Sun and, oddly enough, one called the Star. They are single acting steam engines and they're designed to run at a very high speed and they make a lot of noise. Just what you don't need in enemy occupied territory when you've already lit a fire to boil the water and apart from the smoke from the fire giving away your position, really the last thing you want is a load of noise coming from the same area. I've connected the air supply and I'm going to turn it on. You will see what I mean in a moment. It's not too bad when running slowly, but this isn't going to generate much electricity unless you increase the speed. Now, by way of a comparison, this is the other one that I've just bought. I can immediately hear a couple of things with this engine that I need to change. But for the moment, I'm not going to discuss that. I'm just going to run the engines so you can hear both of them. This engine is far noisier than the red one. And I would think if this had been used in the field emitting this amount of noise, already you would have been picked up by an enemy patrol and shot. And don't forget, this amount of noise is coming from the engine when it's running slowly. When I increase the speed, listen to this. Both of these engines make a slightly different noise, for a couple of reasons. The green one is quite worn, and my ear tells me that the valve timing is slightly retarded on the green one, and I really don't know why this cross drilling is in this plug, that's a mystery to me. I bought this engine via eBay for less money than the price of the castings from Stuart Models. The owner messaged me to tell me that he'd drained the oil out of it before posting it, which was a good idea. I'm really happy with the condition of this engine. It's just the condition I need it to be in. Had it have been perfect, then there wouldn't have been a video, would there? I do intend to rebuild this engine, or should I just say refurbish it, because it's not that bad. I don't like the look of the drain cocks. To me, it looks like one got lost at some time, and someone had a go at making a replacement. Both of these drain valves are very different. I would think that the original is the one on the right-hand side and the other one has been made to replace a lost one. I may replace these for standard taper plug cocks. I don't know yet, it depends how much time I have. I certainly can't live with them like this. When I unscrew them, you can see how bad this particular one is, it's also bent. Yes, these definitely have to go. I'll put them into my box of really horrible drain cock bits. They're quite unlike the drains on the other one. Have a look at this. They are supposed to look like this. On this engine, both of the valves seal perfectly. On the other one, they don't. You will also notice that on this engine, it also has a large hand wheel in the center to control the speed. The green engine just has a steam union in the center. I really cannot live with these valves anymore, so I'm taking them off. The engine is already starting to look a good bit better. In common with quite a lot of the engines I work on, various different parts are made by different people. For instance, I don't much like the look of this displacement lubricator. 
and it has a really odd function. Unlike the valves which functioned as drain cocks, the one on this displacement lubricator does not have a hole in the end. What you do is undo it until the hole in the threaded part becomes visible, then you scald your fingers with boiling water. The red engine is different in several other ways. The base casting of the red engine is entirely different to the green one. It has an extension which in turn takes a threaded tube with a cap on it which contains the dipstick for filling it with oil. And it also has this really nice resealable vent. One of the differences in the sound is the fact that this has quite a clumsy but functional exhaust pipe system. And from the sound of it, it's not worn at all internally. I think the time has arrived to have a look inside the green Sirius engine. There are two brass fittings on the top. One of them is a vent, as you can see, but it's not adjustable like on the red one. I don't know what the other one's supposed to be, but neither of them will come out easily. I can remove this one by using an Allen key, but it's quite a tight fit in the hole. And the other brass fitting, which is a different shape to this, well, I don't know what that's supposed to do at this time. Once I'd removed all of the bolts that secure the top part to the base, not unsurprisingly, the top part of the engine was stuck to the base. But by gentle use of a screwdriver underneath the flywheel, the parts separated easily. I'm really pleased not to find the engine full of rust because this type of engine is very prone to blowing water past the pistons, which then, if it's not drained, sits in the bottom of the engine and can cause severe rusting problems. Luckily, this one is perfect internally, no rust whatsoever. Look at this. And I found out what this part was. It's the top of a dipstick, but it's too tight to withdraw manually. The big end arrangement on these engines is a bit strange. They both have long fingers on the castings, and the idea of this is it stirs up the oil and splashes it about inside the crankcase. The first thing I wanted to check was the amount of play on the big ends, and here in this slow motion clip you can see that there's quite a lot of play between the big end brasses and the crank pins. This should be an easy fix. I also notice a hole drilled all the way through this gear fitted with a taper pin, which is always a good sign. The last thing you want is for this gear to move around. However, it isn't quite in the right position. That's one of the other reasons why both of the engines sound a bit different. This next clip is something you do not see very often. I'm going to run the Sirius for a short while with the base removed so you can see how the parts function inside. I'll leave the engine running to the end of the video, but that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.